Welcome to the Focal Art Word of Life podcast for December 2022. My name is Nick Chamferani and I'll be your host. The Word of Life is a phrase chosen from Scripture each month and shared around the world and that we're all invited to live. The experiences that we are about to listen to in this episode relate to the Scripture phrase, Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock taken from Isaiah chapter 26, verse 4. Does your faith lead you to believe that God is your everlasting rock? Do you believe that He is our refuge and is always ready to help? Are you certain that God will never fail you and that He is with you always? Scripture points to these and so many more assurances that the prophets and apostles give to us And if we have that certainty in our hearts that all of this is true, then we must have a complete trust in our Lord, that we can place ourselves in His loving hands, and our eternal life will be assured. So for this next month, let's show our trust in Him. Our first experience comes from Raoul, who after being diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, finds consolation and courage by having a great trust in God's love for him. The second experience is by Esther from Bangalore, India. She shares how trusting in God played a very important part in helping her get through very difficult times. The third experience comes from Verona, Italy. Maria Luce shares how by trusting in God's love, she was able to find employment after moving to another city. And in the fourth experience, Erin tells of a special encounter with her mom. Welcome, Raul. It's so nice of you to join us today. Thank you, Nick. I'm so happy to be talking with you. Likewise, Raul. It's a great joy to be in touch with you again. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? So, let me introduce myself. I'm Raul. I was born in Paraguay. I'm Paraguayan. I'm married with Fatima. She's from Brazil. We have six children. And today, we have 11 grandchildren. Thank you, Raul. We are now anxious to hear your experience. So I want to share something about the word of life to always trust in God. I had prostate cancer. The doctor detected that it was cancer and he prescribed a few tests. And then we came to take a look at the tests to interpret them. And the doctor said, you have cancer. And I have to be honest with you. On a scale of 1 to 5, your cancer is category 4. It's very aggressive. It was a very strong moment because I knew that I had a tumor, but I didn't know it was this aggressive. We left the visit. I sat in the car and I said to myself, what should I do? This was a surprise for me. I stayed in silence for a moment, thinking, I didn't know what to do. And I told Fatima, today especially, I'm going to live the present moment. We're going to do all the work we need and I'm going to try to love each person that I meet and do every action with love. And I did this, taking every situation and the trust in God. He helped me, He guided me, and I've been able to go ahead because of Him. I belong to him. One night we had a meeting with all my children and we told them the news and they were very surprised. And they told me that I was radiant and it was because of the trust in God that I had. And it was because of the decision that Fatima and I took together. Fatima helped me to be able to embrace this suffering and to make it mine so that it could be some wood for the fire of love, to irradiate love. And we did it this way. 
And also another thing, when I was telling all my friends about this, they all said, cancer, my enemy. I decided to make the decision, my friend, cancer, my friend, because thanks to his visit, I could grow in my relationship with God. I could grow in my spiritual life. So he's my friend. This helped me have trust in God. Trust in God. He's always acting and always be ready to do his will. Thank you so much, Raul, for your wonderful experience. It really shows us how we need to trust, to have that trust and confidence in God. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, because through you, I can show what God does in our life and how He loves us immensely. I can't stop thinking about this, the immense love that He has for us. Thank you, Nick. Welcome, Esther. It is a delight to have you join our podcast from Bangalore, India. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? My name is Esther. I am from, originally from the Philippines, but I've been married to an Indian for 13 years now. And so we are living in Bangalore, India. So I, I'm, I'm also a teacher. I teach in an international school here. I deal with... Um, children who do not speak English. That's such a needed service today, Esther, to be able to teach children, and in your case, teaching them English. Can you share your experience with us? I know it's related to the pandemic and how your family dealt with the situation. During the second wave of COVID in India, it started on the day my mom died. Four days after that, we realized that my husband was tested positive of COVID, and so he needed to go to the hospital. But when he was admitted in the hospital was also the day my mom was buried in the Philippines. So here I am mourning the loss of my mom, but at the same time dealing with the fact that my husband is positive and he is diabetic. When he was tested positive, five days after, me and my son also were tested positive. And two days after us, my father-in-law was also tested positive. So my mom got buried in the Philippines and my husband entered the hospital and stayed in the hospital for 36 days fighting for his life. There were days, Nick, that we were told that he might not survive. There were also days that we were struggling to get in touch with him. So while he was in the hospital, there were moments in which I also became very weak. My father-in-law also was admitted in the hospital because of COVID. All I could do was just trust in God. Keep on praying, Lord, help us, help me. My husband didn't know that his father is in the hospital because I didn't know how he would react. So we kept it from him. Papa died and we didn't tell my husband. But in all those times, my fear, my helplessness were nothing compared to the trust that I have in God. It was only by God's grace that we were able to survive it. Thank God now, if you look at him as if nothing happened, as if that experience was not there. And I can only thank God. He gives strength. We have to be courageous to trust in God. Because when we trust in Him, He will never, ever, ever abandon us. He will always be there. Thank you, Esther. Your experience shows us the great trust and faith you had during such difficult and trying times. Hi, Maria Luce. Welcome to our podcast. Hello. Hello, Nick. It's a joy to be together. Thank yes. you. I'm so delighted you could join us today. Maria Luce, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? 
Yes, yes. Now I find myself in Verona, in Italy. Um, I came back recently after so many years, more than 35 in the States. I worked there as a professor for more than 27 years. And then in the States, because of many circumstances, I studied theology and sociology, and thus I taught in these subjects and these um, courses for many, many years. And now I'm back and I do a lot of work in translation, and which helps me to maintain the link and the bond with the country that I love. Wonderful. Thank you, Maria Luce. It sounds like your journey has been a very special one. And now we'd like to listen to your experience. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, in reading this month's Word of Life, I recalled a very strong experience that uh, I made um, related to having trust in God. Um, I was teaching at the time in a very good school in New York where I was loved and appreciated. I had a number of responsibilities besides teaching. I was also the head of a department. I followed the youth pastoral care, and I also helped the faculty with the spiritual aspect. After my initial struggle, you can imagine, right, in a profession that was very different from what I had studied previously, I was now enjoying teaching. But even more so, I was enjoying the community, the students, the faculty, and the parents, all of them I loved very much. And I have to say with gratitude, they also loved me. At a certain point, an invitation came, totally out of the blue, for me to move upstate in New York uh, to help at the Focolare Center in Mariapolis Luminosa, a center that I have to say that I loved deeply, that I have helped to develop since its onset. I readily said yes, knowing that it would be a special gift of God for me personally. But this meant leaving behind the security of a job I loved of a community I felt a special bond with. It also meant that I needed to search for a new job. I knew that teaching opportunities in my field were very scarce. And so I thought perhaps I should say no to the change. But something inside of me told me that I needed to trust in God and in his love. As I had done many other times in my life, and always I saw that God really loved me, even with all these changes. I needed to trust his love for me more than any security. To trust that he will carry me in the palm of his hand, if this move was in his plan. Therefore, at the time, I started applying to various schools around the area. With courage and a little bit of fear, I also applied to the local university and the Culinary Institute of America, there offering to teach Italian, which I had never done before then. For several weeks, there was no answer. One day, I received a phone call asking if I were available to teach Italian at the Culinary Institute of America. I accepted, but with a little more than a bit of fear. Thus, though, a beautiful and exciting experience began. I became an adjunct instructor in one of the most beautiful communities where with the students and the chefs, we built deep relationship which went beyond the classroom. A few weeks later, I was also called to teach a few classes at another university nearby. The courses were in my field, world religion, philosophy, and the most rewarding science, medicine and ethics in the science department. These courses were the most appreciated and sought after in the science department. And after a few years, I'm still in touch with many of my students who are now professional. And all of this because with God's help, I trusted in him who is really our rock. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Luce, for your wonderful and inspiring experience. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And one thing I have to add, you know, that this trust. Sometimes uh, it was difficult for me to have it fully and complete. And what helped me was to journey with other people that have the same trust in God. I found that that is another strength. You know, when I didn't make it, others were believing for me and with me. So thank you, Nick, for giving me this opportunity to share a piece of my 
experience with God, with all of you who are listening. Thank you. Hi, Aaron. Welcome to our podcast. I'm pleased you are able to join us today. Hi, Nick. Yeah, thanks for having me. While reading your experience, I was touched by how you went the extra mile. Actually, how you went the extra four-hour drive to visit your mom on her birthday. But before you share your experience, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. So um, my name is Erin Kelly, and um, I'm an Army brat, which means both of my parents were in the military, uh, career military men and women. And then I happened to marry somebody who... um, is also in the military and we have four children and um, we are stationed in DC now. So back living in DC traffic. Ah, yes, I can relate to that, Erin. Well, we are now ready to listen to your experience. Yeah, so we had just, um, we had just moved to DC in late July and we were unpacking and it was August. I went for a walk that morning and I just, I thought, oh my gosh, it's my mom's birthday. I completely forgot to, you know, send her a card or flowers. And, and I just thought to myself, wait a minute, I only live four hours away. I could get in the car, be there by this evening and surprise her. And so I brought her flowers. I'd stopped and picked up some flowers and a gift card for her. And she was very surprised. We were getting ready to go over to a store, just go shopping together. And she just stopped in the doorway, basically the entrance of the store. And she just started crying and she was just, we both did. And she was just so happy that I had taken the time to come up there and be with her. And, you know, honestly, I think in the moment when I decided to go, I thought, you know, I'm going to go up here. And I really felt like I had received the blessing too of, of being able to be with her. And I think too, just that realization of, you know, um, she doesn't have a lot of friends and she'd lost her husband last year. So she's gone through a really difficult time. It was just, it was a really beautiful moment. And I just felt so grateful that, you know, I had the opportunity and the means to be able to do that. Erin, you mentioned that moving to DC was a bit of a challenge for you. How did trusting in God help you through the move? You know, when we first found out we were moving to DC, I was a little deflated <laughs> to say the least. Um, because as I had mentioned, been there, done that. But I know that whatever will come of this, that you have a plan that will help to prosper us. And I've seen that so much so in these last few months within the relationships that I have in my family and being able to be, you know, I'm six hours from my dad, I'm four hours from my mom now. Um, and so being able to just hop in the car and, and spend time with the people that I love has been such a gift. And I think it's important in those moments when we don't quite understand the plan that we try to do our best to trust in God and and in his love for us, because um, there's always a plan of love in our lives. And we just have to, to try to trust him. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks again for taking the time to share your wonderful experience. I hope you and the family have a very special and blessed Christmas and happy holidays and it was great to see you too and I'll definitely send your greetings to our family yes please do I would really appreciate that bye so thank you for joining us today I hope you've been inspired by the wonderful stories shared and I look forward to being with you again next month to listen to the commentary on the word of life just go to the previous episode of this podcast. I invite you to join me each month for new episodes. And please consider making a donation to Focolari Media so that we can continue producing inspiring podcasts. Visit give.focolare.us That's G-I-V-E dot focolare dot U-S And look for the tab that says Focolari Media. Thank you in advance for your support, and may you have a blessed Christmas and grace-filled New Year. The Word of Life is translated into approximately 90 different languages and dialects, reaching millions worldwide through print, radio, TV, and other media. There are special versions for children and teens as well, which you can find at livingcitymagazine.com. This podcast has been brought to you by Focolare Media.